Hello guys. So in this video is a request. Um, I'm proposing something that might be really difficult for people to swallow. And I'm requesting, I'm putting out, I'm inviting anybody to educate me and elucidate me if you if you see holes in my theory or if you can tell me the, my basic question right is this is about the big bang so my basic question about the big bang is where did this stuff which expanded you know there's like the big bang theory if i understand it correctly tells us that in the beginning i don't as far as i'm concerned there is no beginning and there is no end right because energy everything is energy energy can either be created or destroyed therefore conservation law states that there is no beginning and no end if nothing can be created or destroyed then nothing created uh, anything right so the create the big the big bang theory as far as i understand is that there was some uh, very dense very hot you know, material, particle, like soup of particles, which suddenly expanded, right, to about the size of a football. And that was the beginning of everything. This expansion is what they call the bang, which was not an explosion of any kind. An explosion requires, you know, some sort of burst, right, or like a collision, or something has to, ex in order for there to be an explosion, Something needs to already be there in order to explode, right? Because you can't explode a void. So if the Big Bang was the beginning, how can there have already been some hot, dense stuff which expanded? And I propose that it was not the beginning. Of course, it can't be the beginning because there was already something there. So... You know, you're saying that the universe was created by the Big Bang uh, of this stuff, this expan the expansion of this hot, dense, raw material from which everything came. But where did this hot, dense, raw material come from then? Where did the stuff that the Big Bang banged, where did that come from? I propose that it came from thought, mind consciousness and i'm not the first one to propose this obviously anybody who's uh well read in the vedic scriptures and the ancient sciences because that is what they were these vedic scientists were laying out the whole system of how phenomena emerged and how it works like the physics of the universe that's what I believe, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm inviting anybody to challenge this because I still have never seen any new scientific discoveries that doesn't echo what the Vedics were saying. And in fact, every other religion, this might upset people too, every other religion, especially monotheistic religion, that says that there's only one God or one source, is saying the same thing as the Vedas. And since the Vedas were here first, I would imagine just by, you know, linear thinking, which is might be my error because linear thinking is is erroneous like this the universe doesn't work in the linear way it works through non-linear entrainment and that's a whole nother thing but um in the bible you know for example they say that in the beginning there was the word right and the word was with god and the word was good so the word to me the way i interpret that is thought we think in words, generally. Sometimes we think in images, but most people can agree that the majority of thoughts happen in words. Words and thoughts create time and space. If anybody here has ever experienced a state of deep meditation, you will be familiar with a state of being in which there is no such thing as time and space. Time goes on around you, but you simply don't experience it. Like, you can be sitting there for an hour or 30 minutes and it would have felt like, let's say, 
five minutes or, you know, like however long it took you to get to that place where there's no more time, that's how long it feels like it happened. And also in deep sleep. If you've ever been in a car and fallen deeply asleep and you wake up and you think it's only been 10 minutes have passed, but you realize you've, tr you've traveled, you know, if you've been traveling for 45 minutes, it's almost like you time traveled, right? So anyway, my point in all this is to say that there's got to be somebody scientifically minded who can either explain to me how, what, what am I missing, you know, what created the stuff that, that expanded when the Big Bang started? Or what, you know, what, what, how is it that people who believe the Big Bang Theory, how do you reconcile the fact that there was already something there in this theory, there was already something in existence, which would therefore mean that it was not the beginning. The beginning would have been how that stuff got there, right? I mean, it's that, I feel like that's pretty soundproof logic. If it's the beginning, then there is nothing already in existence because beginning implies that there was, that it's the very beginning, that there was nothing before it, that it was not created yet. And if it was created before, I propose that it was thought, thought mind, the stuff of the universe, energy itself, which is what we, our own science says, cannot be created or destroyed. So we have a theory, we have a, a very beautiful, elegant formula, right? It's called E equals MC squared. E equals MC squared means basically that everything in the universe, everything that we, everything that, that we experience, that we see, like this couch, is made of energy. Mat energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And then you can reverse that. Mass equals energy divided by the speed of light squared. Something like that. So then everything is energy. And then you also have told me science tells us that uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Whatever amount of energy there is in the universe, that's, that's it. There's no, you can't add any, like it, you can't simply create it. You can only transform energy, which is why there's no such thing as death. And which is why there's no such thing as birth. And there's no such thing as the beginning, and there's no such thing as an end. And if that is not soundproof logic, somebody please, uh, you know, offer an alternative perspective. And I will be super glad to explore and be, uh, you know, elucidated, you know, be set free from my ignorance, if you will. Much love to everybody. Satnam.